Hello YouTube, this is David Gould from Sloan Toyota, Philadelphia, and I wanted to take a moment to walk out and to introduce everybody to the all-new 2020 Toyota Corolla, you heard me right, 2020 Hybrid, heard me right again, Hybrid Corolla. Uh, first impressions of this car, the new body style is definitely sleeker. It's, a, it's a, got a more of a uh, slope lines to it, sportier feel to it. It looks a little wider across the front, uh, narrowing down to the back, more like we'd see with some sports cars out there. Now, uh, for those who are familiar with the Corolla, the Corolla is number one car brand plate in the world, uh, sold under different names throughout the, uh, the world. Uh, but it's, it's a, a very, very dependable car. I don't think anybody's surprised that clicks on this video that the Corolla is, is, is the car for uh, stability. It's been definitely geared as a family car aimed towards a, um, you know, kind of like maybe your first Toyota um, and uh, very, very conservative in the past. I would not call this car conservative. I would say this car is definitely aiming towards uh, a younger audience. I mean, let's face it, at this point, Toyota is looking for that, and I think they've uh, hit a grand slam with the design. It has all the parts and pieces. Now, first impressions of the car from an old Toyota guy like me, uh, the headlights. The headlights are very cool, all right? They've got a little uh, smoked, in this case here, uh, coloring on the inside there. It's LED, let's pop that on real quick, see if we can take a look at that. Lighting up in the front, a little difficult to see in the daytime here, but actually you can see it because LED is pretty bright. Uh, we have a decorative patterns here, and then it's an LED projection headlamp. For those who aren't familiar with projection, think of like a movie theater projector. It's able to actually be out there, and I can uh, even see on my pants during broad daylight right here, the line of where that, uh, how bright that is, okay? It's really quite impressive as to how well of a job uh, the lighting is, how clear of a white it is with the LED lighting. Toyota Corollas have had the LED lighting now for a few years, but this is definitely ramping up uh, the challenge and, and bringing it up to another level. Now, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Toyota's hybrids, if you're ever looking at a Toyota and you see the blue rings inside the Toyota right there, that means you're looking at a hybrid, okay? Uh, also, looking at the front of this car, we can definitely see we're pulling up kind of the S model, SE model honeycomb grill, sportier look. Um, also, we're going to get with this, we're going to move up into our newer, um, let's see what we're going to call it here, the safety sense, and that's going to be the 2.0 pre-collision with pedestrian detection, okay? Now the 2.0, we had our 1.0, that started about 2017 in these cars, but the 2.0 is gonna bring us up to where we're gonna be able to see uh, more. It's gonna be more active, proactive, uh, picking up things like person on a bicycle, being able to keep the car centered on the lane, not just be able to do lane keep where it bounces back and forth, but actually project where the car is gonna be in the lane. Uh, automatic uh, lighting, high beam lighting, which is gonna work along with those uh, lights we just saw up in the front and uh, dynamic radar cruise control which is also going to make us uh, be able to work with that as well okay um, driving the car to bring it up onto the lot oh by the way while I'm at the sticker right here look at that my Prius that's the gas mileage of a Prius now we used to be in the high 30s uh, low 40s on a good day all right basically looking at utopia driving the gas only Corolla. We are now looking at 53 in the city, 52 in a highway. So in other words, you're over 50 miles a gallon in a Corolla, all right? And then if that wasn't enough, it's gonna also be a very, very significant, in my opinion, ride and drive. First thing, when I got in this car, took it right, I'm the first one in it, coming off of that safety uh, inspection, coming off the truck, is this car is way snappier. Now, what's happening is you have the same motor, a gas motor in there, all right? They're adding in the electric, it's pure torque, just like the Prius has, up on top of it, all right? So let's take a walk around the side here. I want to correct, you give you the correct sizing here. It's the 1.8 motor, okay? Uh, double overhand uh, uh, cams, which means it's going to have two, four valves per cylinder, okay? Gives it more breathing, uh, like an athlete. It can go in now. It's got variable valve, which means it can adjust. As it's driving, it'll adjust for you as to how wide the valves are going to open and close. So up on a highway, when you're letting off the gas, you'll be cruising along doing your legal on, on the turnpike, 70 miles an hour, and this car's hardly using any gas at all because it just kind of lets off. But if you needed to pass a truck going up a hill, going up through the throughway on the turnpike, as you step down, the valves open, and it lets in more fuel, and of course, then away we go. And the electronic is also going to give you a good push. 
All right, so we got 15 inch wheels also in there. Those are pretty nice. Gets us out of the gates and ready to go. Um, we have the breakaway mirrors here. Those are nice and handy. Toyota kind of bought into them a few years back. I'm glad they did because both, especially in the city around where we are here, these bolt to the inside of the door. In the event that somebody hits that like that, you'd also have a major cost in replacing door panels or a really ugly door. For anybody asking questions about what this is right here and leaning down along to the back, right back to here, Toyota, these are called Vortex Generators. Uh, those familiar with Toyota Racing knows that Toyota's gotten heavy into that now with NASCAR and others. They're watching the flow of air, okay? So basically what's happening is when these cars are running down through, such a simple thing as putting these little uh, uh, out marks here onto the car makes the air spin. So if you could picture the air doing this, coming down the car, and as it's spinning, instead of coming straight down the car, as it spins, it goes out the back spinning. If it didn't have these, it would wrap around the back. As you wrap around the back, that's called drafting. You might have seen uh, in, uh, in race car driving where the other car drives right into the, under the back bumper, right to the back bumper of the other car. They're driving in the draft. The other car in front is actually pulling them and they get better gas mileage that way. It's less effort for their car. But that's not really good for you if you're driving the car. If Toyota's picking up even a half mile per gallon, and these work at higher speeds, okay? It's say 60 miles and above. I don't know what the exact amount is they're saving, but you do it over the entire Toyota fleet by simply putting a couple little plastic marks into their molds, they're picking up and saving a lot of fuel. Of course, that's uh, every bit of fuel that's saved is uh, less cost to owners and also less pollution up into the air. Uh, also noticeable the inside of the car now, going up into the 2020 model, the car looks a lot sleeker on the inside, okay? Let's face it, the Corolla definitely had a dated look to it in the past. And you know what? Most of the owners, we, we just didn't care. Toyota wasn't that worried about that. It was all about the dependability and everything else. Toyota has not given up any of the dependability. We are, they are, the hybrid experts, if you would, with over 50% of their patents in hybrids. Toyota's got this part down pat. You're going to see hybrids in just about all of our cars in the near future. As a matter of fact, all-wheel drive also, because of the hybrid uh, axles, is also going to become a very big standard in the cars. So this one is a front-wheel drive hybrid Corolla. Let's jump into the car. It's very noticeable that the seats are definitely two-tone and uh, sporty with the uh, sewing in here. Never would have seen that before in a Corolla. As I jump into the car, um, we've got the new electronic brake, okay? So in other words, I didn't step on the brake. As soon as I turn the car off, it's going to automatically lock and put on the e-brake. And then if I wanted to press and hold it, let's say I lived in San Francisco on the hill, I could press and hold that, it would lock it in place. We got a couple of drive modes up on the top here, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that we can change them around, traction control off, EV mode because it's electric we can make the car force it to lean towards the electric mode uh, If you were say an uber driver taxi cab driver, you'd love this Okay, because now you're talking about the car getting um, considerably higher mileage and even what's on the stickers on the side All right uh, because it's going to drive primarily to the electric mode at low speed. Okay, that's important to know. If you're driving it up on the highway or, or it's just going to try to lean towards the electric. If, and, and it will get some better gas mileage. But as soon as you step down the gas during normal driving, it's going to go back to the normal gas mode. But EV mode kind of gives it a <coughs> start, excuse me, <coughs> start towards the uh, electric side first. It does work. Um, it just it tends to stay in electric a little bit longer, I guess. Okay, over here, uh, we got some automatic... Uh, headlights, they're nice to have, and uh, it'd be surprised how many cars still don't. Uh, up on the dashboard here, definitely has a Toyota um, uh, sportier look to it on the inside here. This is more like we'd expect to find in our SE models of the cars, you know, with the purple and, and the lighting up on the inside. Uh, we don't want to say uh, Honda Civic, <clears throat> but, you know, it, it definitely has that sportier feel when you're sitting in the car now versus just the plain whites that we might have seen in the past. The radios have moved from back down here in not that long ago, maybe 10 years ago. Then they went to here. Now we can see them all the way up here. Okay, why? Because they don't want us looking down at them, right? It makes sense. The radio and the screens up here, there's a ton of stuff going on with infotainment. It does depend on which car you get. So when you're looking at the cars, pay a little bit of attention to what's important to you with the uh, audio systems. But let's face it, most of what's going on here can be done with your smartphone and can be pulled right in through the Bluetooth anyway. So if I wanted to have, say, Sirius Radio, I can pull Sirius Radio app through my smartphone, run it through my Bluetooth, and boom, I'm off and going. The only question just comes down to hand controls off the steering wheel. How much of this stuff can we use along with it? Um, you guys can determine what's best for you when, when your time comes, okay? This particular one, as equipped, has the push-button start down below here, has automatic headlight switch down below here, 
and I've got a dimmer switch for the inside lighting as well. Up onto the sides here, I can see my controls for the outside mirrors. I've got my locks and child lock switch, which is nice if you have little ones. Uh, so they're not playing with the, <laughs> with the windows going up and down in the back. <clears throat> glove box area inside here. Toyota always has had a good trunks and good glove box. So we got lots of space inside there. We can see our books down in there. Uh, pretty important and we, it gets blown over way too often. Uh, Toyota with these advanced airbags, these are really uh, in, in the front now. These are going to be for here and here. Uh, these are very smart uh, systems and uh, uh, Toyota's been using it for years where the airbag is going to come out based on the accident, okay? Advanced airbags means that the airbag, in the event that the car was in a lower speed accident, isn't going to come out at full impact, at full speed. When you have a one stage airbag, an airbag, and I wear, say, glasses, and if I'm, I do have shorter legs, if I'm up closer to the wheel, and I've seen people that hug the steering wheel with glasses, this airbag coming out could actually cause more damage to my face or, or to hitting me than, than the actual accident itself. Um, now, this is my number, okay? I'm telling you I've heard it, and I'm not telling you I'm right. You have YouTube, you have all kinds of other sources out there. You figure out what it is right for you or not. I heard around 18 miles an hour is right, roughly where these things are set for an airbag to go off. In other words, if we ran into a wall at 18 miles an hour, it's going to go. The car can absorb a significant amount of damage. Say you have a 5, 10, 15 mile an hour uh, accident, and we're not even really going to feel it so much on the inside of the car. It's going to be a hit, but it's not going to be a hard hit. With our seatbelts on, everybody would be fine in here without airbags at that level. And, you know, again, you didn't hear that from me. That's just basically what we're saying. Uh, what I'm saying, okay? Uh, yeah, I'd like you to definitely use your own sources if you're going to uh, start quoting stuff. Uh, the bottom line is that, that there is a, a point at which that this car will absorb on its own with the design of the uh, absorption of the car to be able to make it where it makes sense. And don't, you know, the, the person on the inside is not going to pick it up. I'm sorry, it's a little uh, overwhelming with that. But the bottom line is these airbags would come out at say it was a 20 mile an hour impact at a lower rate Again, I don't know the exact amounts as of what they're using, but they're not going to come out at full speed. Say it was 30 miles, 40 miles an hour, a different rate. And then at the full speed, if you need it, if you hit at full speed, they're going to come out just like the other guys at full speed, but you're not taking that hit right out of the gates. Okay, enough said about that. These have been in our cars for a long time. So have, uh, the safety sense has been in this car since 2017. The star safety system, which is uh, four channel braking, anti-locking braking, vehicle stability control, I mean, a brake assist, there's a ton of stuff. That's been in since before 2010. So these cars are not new to being safe. And I think the reason you're probably looking at this video and why the Corolla has got its stating uh, status throughout the world is because everybody does know that. And if it just in the world, physically, this car is a little bit smaller. In a lot of places, there isn't as much space as in the United States for parking. So you would also understand why the Camry for 15 years was number one because we have more space here in, in overall sales. But Corolla throughout the world is going to be the one that Toyota's kind of got their uh, benchmark with. Um, okay, that's a lot. So uh, let's start the car up. <clears throat> Now, now, the car, actually, I just turned the car off. How about that? Uh, bottom line is the car doesn't need idle, okay? So I just jumped in. I drive a Prius. I should know better than that. Um, so I got into the car, and I just turned it on, okay? It's lighting up on the inside here. Um, let's see what happens if this guy's going to cycle. All right. If the battery is charged, it won't need to turn the motor on. I'm uh, going down to my automatic. As I put it down into D, the e-brake comes off by itself. And we are now on, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and ready to roll, okay? Now the one thing is, just like uh, with the hybrid and the Prius, there, the car is not on, as in the gas motor is not on right now. This is like driving a golf cart, if you would. But what's unique about it is, so I'll get up to probably 9, 10 miles an hour. I'm in a parking lot, so I'm not going to get up to going that fast. I'll get up to maybe... Uh, so far, gas motor still not on. Uh, one of the changes that they made when they went into 2019, uh, and, and it might have been 18 with the Prius, but 19, is they, they do have our cars running in electric longer before the gas. There goes the gas motor. Now, you wouldn't have probably heard it, but it is on in the car, and the RPMs are going to come on. I don't know if we can see that up on our dash for what's going on. But the bottom line right now is as the battery drops down, it's not a huge battery. <laughs> it's just going to keep the car running when the car would be idling. Think about it that way, and at very low speeds, okay? Now, if I hit the EV button, let's try it. I just hit the EV button. Let's see if we if that's gonna cut off the, uh, <coughs> off the motor. 
Right now we're in eco mode up on the top there. Okay, that's off. And I can see EV right here, okay, up on the top. And now we'll keep going along. And you notice the electric, as soon as I hit that EV button, the, the gas motor shut off. So it's gonna stay in electric only now as I'm bopping around. So if you could picture you're sitting, uh, particularly if you're in the human transport services, uh, you're if you're using it for Uber, if you're using it for things like that, this is where you might be sitting waiting for somebody for a while. Being in EV mode, the gas motor is not gonna kick on as much and as quick, okay? So that would be the, the advantage for in particular with those folks. Um, don't mean to leave you Lyft drivers out, right? You can see we even have Lyft here over at our store. So, you know, whoever is out there, if, if, you're, if you're just sitting and idling, if for any reason your use of the car is, there's a lot of it. Right now, I'm moving along, and uh, this is all electric only. And now, if I step down, there, go, there goes the gas motor. Now, by the way, there is a huge difference, in my opinion, in power. Um, now, by the way, when I say my opinion, this isn't just my opinion. This is going to be a really big difference in the power of the car. Anybody that's had a Corolla knows that a Corolla is a family car. We sold them for years and years based on the idea that they, they weren't out to do zero to 50 or anywhere anytime quick. Let's listen to this car when it takes off here and how quick we're going to get across the back of the lot. Hopefully not uh, bang anything up. Ready? All right, we're pure torque as it kicks off, all right? Now, that's almost 40 miles an hour just across the back of that building right there. It's very quiet. It's, it's a very deceptive. I try to keep it so you can see it. Hopefully, you can see that with the video. Um, it's very quiet because the electric is pure torque, okay? Uh, the steering, I notice, is much, uh, feels to me anyway, to be much easier steering than the, uh, which is, it's electronic, and Toyota can adjust that, how much feedback. It's very light compared to what I'm used to with the Toyotas, okay? Here we go again. And we, uh, get, we gotta take it easy here because we are on a back lot. But the bottom line is that you're getting the power, the 1.8 motor that we had before, but we're also getting the punch of the electronic uh, motor as well, which is in, in addition to, okay? Uh, I know that's annoying here. Let me put my seatbelt on. It's because I took that speed up over the top of the lot speed. The car knows that I'm going, so it thinks I'm out on a highway driving trying to uh, trying to hurt myself. All right, so anyway, we're gonna take it easy here a little bit. Um, let me put up the windows here, see if you can see just how quiet. Now it's got automatic up windows, my hands are free from that. I can hear that little bit of a, of a like a, a winding down, like an electronic winding down of the motor as I'm slowing down there. But other than that, you know, That's a pretty quiet car. I mean, that's gonna be one of the advantages of the sedans. For example, the Camry and the Corolla going up into this 50 plus miles a gallon. Um, you know, I'm not putting down my Prius. I love my Prius. I've been driving Prius for 10 years, but the Prius is, we would definitely be picking up more noise than this, okay? You know, it'll it'll go zero to thirty really quick uh, for that difference in between there. And again, it's not about being a race car. We're not trying to build uh, sports cars that way. It's about gas mileage. And uh, think of it like a, a side uh, a side effect. A side effect of that is uh, the electronics giving us this extra power. And uh, hey, the car's fun. Okay, it gives us a good a good feel. So here I go. I just put the car back into park. Car electronically puts a brake on. I'm not stepping on the pedal on the floor anymore. <laughs> Moving over to the infant, uh, climate control on the inside, uh, I can see our climate controls. Um, it does look like it's single-sided in this case right here uh, for the driver controls all. Um, we got our normal modes. This is very, very basic stuff. That's what we see. And that's what Corolla has always been anyway, so there's no shocker there. Up on the top here is the Entune system. Anybody familiar with, uh, and I'm, I think I understand the Entune name is going to go away. But um, you know, bottom line is it's Toyota software-driven audio system. In other words, they can download and upload to these to change um, things, make them better as you drive the car. And, and you know, it's because things are changing so fast, in particular with the amount of information that we're running from our phones, okay? So if uh, Apple, Android, somebody comes up with a, a new uh, update, Google phones, whoever, if they come up with it, they can upload up into the radio the ability to be able to work with whatever those changes are. And uh, it, it may not sound important to you until you get a, a radio that doesn't have it. 
And then all of a sudden you go and upgrade your phone or go get another phone. And now you can't do things that you could do before. So, um, you know, that's the reason. That's why Toyota's heading this way. The infotainment, the ability to be able to work with the radios and, and, and information going back and forth um, is, is becoming more and more important. Um, initially, it seemed redundant. In other words, it did the same thing to me. But it does make sense from a personalization point of view, and in particular in Toyota's world, the hands-free part of it, okay? That we're using our fingers, our thumb in this case here, to be able to move around and make things happen, skip a song, do things, rather than reaching out over here while we're driving and looking over here. So in other words, I want to skip a song. I don't like that one. I'm driving. I just simply touch a button here, and off it goes and does it over here, even though it's on my coming out of my phone. So, hey, pretty cool. And now, by the way, that depends on the app and everything else. So in, in the case of, uh, I guess it was um, Pandora was the one I was using at the time when we did it last. But anyway, we can also talk to it here, which is a good thing. All right, we can give it voice commands. You know, that is definitely uh, a, a learned curve. The car has to learn, uh, and you have to learn how to make the car do whatever it's going to do. Uh, over on the side here, we have mode controls. We're being able to change how the car is uh, driving, what it's doing. Lane keep up on top here. Radar uh, uh, cruise settings here and, and our pre-collision settings. Now, you ask what this is, okay? Basically, uh, the radar sits... Let me get out and show you this part. Uh, you break it set by itself. I can't quite get used to that. All right, let me get out and show you how this works with the radar. Up on top right here is a camera. I think most people probably, not one or two of you, think that that's where the radar is, all right? That's uh, where a lot of the manufacturers went to the cameras. Our radar in uh, Lexus Toyota world is sitting back behind this uh, hybrid symbol here, right? The blue ring. And behind there is a, it's a, a, a finer millimeter reading radar that can see even down to flesh and bone, all right? A person. Uh, and in this case, I'm gonna come back in here because the wind might be getting into the camera. All right, so in this case now, the camera is picking up a visual image, okay? It's saying, hey, I can see an object. The object looks like, and then it's comparing it to a whole bunch of images that have been set up in there, preset up in there. Uh, for example, a person, okay? A per what a person looks like. Now, the, mil the millimeter radar up in the front, it can identify, hey, something's out in front of me, but it's not necessarily knowing, okay, exactly what that, that uh, image is. It's comparing based on what it knows, but it's, it's going to then talk with, in, in Toyota's case, that's important. It's going to then talk with the uh, images up on top here with the video, and they're going to compare notes, and they're going to do it in a lightning fast, okay? And at the point at which it says, hey, it's not a bag full of leaves, it, it, that the picture says, it says it's a person. And in today's world with the 2.0 uh, safety sense, even somebody on a bicycle, okay? It says, hey, it's a bicyclist. At that point, I'm driving along, I never saw you. You just come zipping out around me. My foot's on the gas. This car is going to stop itself. It's going to pull back the seatbelt. It's going to slam the braking system, which actually is a phenomenal braking system because that goes back to the star safety system. Um, <laughs> brake distribution, vehicle stability control. You can have full steering capabilities during the whole use of it. The bottom line is that we are all going to become uh, basically superhuman drivers with these system. what's in here. Now, for those of you who are familiar with autonomous, self-driving vehicles, these are the features that are being used in those uh, cars, parts of them, to make the cars do what they do. It's just in these cars right now, we as human beings still have control of the feedback, okay? So we're allowed to uh, basically get used to what these cars can do on their own before maybe that uh, Uber or Lyft car comes up with no, nobody driving it to our driveway and expecting me or somebody else to get in it. You know, I might do it as a joy ride, but you know, I, I think it would be a little disconcerting for most folks if you got into a car today and it had no driver and it was about to take you off to wherever you were gonna go. Well, here we go with them getting us, I, this is my theory, them getting us used to the idea of um, what the cars can and can't do by themselves. Now, right there on the floor. Uh, I'm sure the key has left as well. And you can see there how big that trunk is. Now, as we step back and look, look at that cut out here, how deep this goes along here, all right? Now, if you could put that uh, larger 50 pound uh, bags inside there if you're traveling there's a lot of space you can use that space you can get it down here a lot of the competitors you're going to see them coming across the top here and you say wait a minute how could toyota do that without losing the rigidity on the side the way they did it is up in here this is ultra strength steel all the way up and through here ultra strength steel is alloy it's strong it allows the car to uh hold the rigidity if you would if it's slammed in from the side so up inside here 
can see the beams going across the top that give the rigidity up to there and then down across here. Okay, so Corolla retains its huge trunk on the inside there. Lots of space. Uh, emergency release on the inside there. Gosh forbid if somebody was on the inside, glows in the dark, was on the inside, needed to get out. Uh, and you can see the lights on the, ins on the back here. The vortex generator continued off here. Also continuing off that front look. So uh, I know this is a very long-winded video um, about the uh, hybrid 2020 Corolla. I hope it's helpful for a few of you out there. If you have any other questions, my name is David Gould. I'm one of the new car managers at Sloan Toyota Philadelphia. I think it's a, a great thing that the hybrids are coming out in, in larger numbers right now. I know that and many, many uh, things, uh, you know, political and things going on out and around. Uh, people are trying to come up with ways to be able to, to reduce the overall uh, fossil fuel usage. You know, we're talking at this point, if you could put these hybrids across our fleet, we're getting faster cars. We're getting not quite double, but we're getting at least a third better gas mileage. You do that across everything that's out there. And uh, here is the answer, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, still allows for us not to uh, run out of electric power, get stuck on the road, side of the road, or wait for hours and hours to charge up. This we just pull up to the gas station, get some gas, and you let the electric help us out where it needs to help out. Um, I think we've got a grand slam here with this car. If anybody has any questions, we're out here. We look forward to it. And uh, by the way, if you like this video, uh, please like it and uh, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more like it. Uh, have a wonderful, blessed day. David Gould, Sloan Toyota, Cotman Avenue in Philadelphia. Be well. Be blessed.